Many biotech firms have faced setbacks when their proposed ALS treatments have failed their endpoints and clinical trials, illustrating the difficulties in developing effective treatments. However, the high unmet need continues to drive the FDA to consider approving treatments that may not have demonstrated clear effectiveness, showing significant opportunity in the space. And with me is Howard Berman, the CEO of Koya Therapeutics, to talk about where they are with the ALS treatment. I know it's promising. You're targeting uh, T cells, also known as TREGS. So it's kind of a unique approach here. Let's just, let's start with that, Howard. Many of these firms have faced setbacks. Talk about what you are doing at Koya to have a different approach. Well, first we real, thank you very much. Well, first we realize that inflammation is playing a critical role in the disease pathophysiology. I think that's one of the most critical determinants. Other companies have focused on individual pathways in the inflammatory cascade. The problem with doing that is that the immune system is so complex and it's so redundant that if you block one of the individual cytokines or pathways, there are others to take over. It's the redundancy, unfortunately, just like you see in cancer. So what COYA is focused on is the regulatory T cell, which is the master regulator cell of the body. It controls and prevents inflammation. So we want to ramp up those Tregs, which are dysfunctional in ALS, and the Tregs sit at the top of the pyramid in this cascade. But we take a step further. Not only do we ramp up the Tregs with our low-dose IL-2 therapy, but we add another treatment, a two-hit approach, with called CTLA-4IG, which is a beta sept, which is our own proposed biosimilar beta sept, and that blocks and controls other aspects of the immune system and inflammation, which turns out to be synergistic. By doing both of those mechanisms together, we think it has a much more potent impact on suppressing the inflammatory pathway than other companies that are addressing these this issue. Well, it's interesting. I remember hearing about T-cells during COVID as well. So they must be very important to how the human body reacts to things. Why is it significant to study ALS with the, the TREGs and the T-cells? Right. Well, Dr. Stan Appel, who's one of the fathers of modern ALS, he's the progenitor of the technology, which we've been licensed. He discovered that in patients with ALS, that Tregs are not only dysfunctional, they're not only not working properly, but that the degree of dysfunction correlates to the patient's degree of decline and their survival. So they are playing a critically important role, these Tregs, in terms of the ALS disease course. So that if you can manipulate or modify these Tregs, which are a subset of the T-cell, they're different than the other types of T-cells that you've referenced. Like the, some T-cells are good for inflammation because they ramp it up when you have an infection. We want to lower the amount of the, the inflammation. And those are the Tregs, which are the other subset of cells. So it's critically important, these Tregs in the role in ALS, by the way, other neurodegenerative diseases. Well, and I, I think that just explains how complicated this is. <laughs> like, the, you know, so many different T cells and things like that to study. Why is this cell so important? Well, the T cell is a master cell. There's a number of types of T cells. So when one, for example, has a virus or a bacterium, you have the T cells that are that propagate to attack those the areas of inflammation and those bacteria and viruses. But then the other type of T cell, the T reg cell, subset of cells, actually does the exact opposite. They stop the inflammation. So there's pro-inflammatory T cells that are important to stop viruses and bacteria. And then there's anti-inflammatory T cells, which are the T reg cells. So it's a balancing act. And our goal is to ramp up the anti-inflammatory type of T cell, not the pro-inflammatory type. And you also are embarking on a new larger study as well. Explain a little bit about where are you in that process and what do you hope to learn from that study? Sure. So we are gearing up to do a hope to be a phase two trial. It's going to be well-powered and double-blind placebo-controlled. It's going to have an arm of placebo where patients are not on active treatment and as well as a active arm. And we're going to balance it out with various types of criteria. And our goal is to really showcase that at six months, which is a critical endpoint in ALS, that the decline in patients is statistically lower 
in the active arm versus in the placebo arm. And if we can show that and it can be meaningful and we can also potentially correspond with blood biomarkers, we think that will be a very important information that we at the FDA sees and, and takes the next steps. Okay. So at that point, then, if you have the results that you hope to have, then you present that data to the FDA and... They take a look at it and decide what to do right. next. Yes, yeah. That's right. And there's a lot of regulatory wins that are in favor of ALS. It's a devastating disease. It has huge, high unmet need. It's a desperate time where we need new modalities and treatments that can really make a difference in these patients' lives. So this, this study, based on the signal we've seen, we believe that this will be sufficient in order to get the signal that we're aiming to get. Okay. Well, thank you so much. And I hope you'll come back when you have those results and we can talk about what you found and where you go from there. Oh, it's my pleasure. And thank you for having me today. Thank you.